Welcome back all of you, Nana here. And then uh, we are now going to begin a new topic on the procurement. So this pillar is known as uh, procurement contracts. So let me go on and share my screen now. So let us now open up the intro to procurement contracts. Hello. <clears throat> Yeah. No, I am in a class actually. Uh, the class will be over by around four o'clock. So uh, can you give me? Oh, uh, yeah, four four ten. You can call. Okay. So let us open up the additional docs and records for no fine. Let me check my There is no open. So there here will now go down. <coughs> Will now one sixty eighth document, which is a synopsis of a procurement contract. So you now open up the document. What exactly is a procurement contract? You're going to see document double click on it. So we are now seeing what exactly is the procurement contract. So the procurement contracts, shortly known as a PC, fine, or for legal obligations of supplier and customer. See, you might have seen in the newspapers that uh, whatever the, the Microsoft has a sued Oracle or Dell, something like that, for a huge whatever is it, it is a hundred million dollars <throat> because of deviations on the legal obligations by each other. Actually. So whenever any party deviate, so the other party can go to the court of law and then uh, file a suit, lawsuit, and then uh, if they win it, they'll be gaining a huge amount of money. So now what happens? Uh, the terms and conditions on a PC, the procurement contract, has now written by some experts actually so that what happens is there won't be any deviation at all it's a very important one so the pc module itself is for what legal obligations of supplier and customer any party can sue each other on the code of law the classes the sections and its contents fine the class there will be some classes every class will be having multiple sections every section will be having a lot of contents and then give a vital role now fine. this plays a vital role <clears throat> as described in the terms and conditions of a contract actually. Usually the business practice director, right? every company will be having a business practice director. He is uh, basically uh, very good in legal obligations, basically. And then he must be, he will be a law graduate. And then uh, he will be uh, in charge of what happens, uh, writing or authoring the, uh, what happens, the terms and conditions. Right? So you, let's say you're working in Infosys or uh, some other company, now, right? some other implementing company. You go to a cement industry and then what happens, you've been asked to in, in, uh, implement PC now. So you may not be knowing the what happens the legal obligations of for a cement company at all with the supplier actually. So in which case what happens you'll be taking the advice from below supplier maybe or something. One second. So now what happens, uh, uh, the business practice director will be uh, basically an expert, no? Fine, legal expert actually. And then uh, he will be in charge of what? Writing this uh, PC actually. He will be in charge of writing this PC. And then once, when he writes the PC, it will be very nice. And then let us say you are a consultant from an implementing company. And then you go and then land up on a cement industry. And so what happens, uh, they will now guide you about how to write the PC. <clears throat> Fine. Because maybe the classes are the real important one where uh, the cream of a contract actually. So you may not be knowing the classes which are required, <clears throat> right, which are required, and uh, you will not be able to write it very properly actually. So what you do is you will now take the what happens the consent from the people now, right, consent from people, and then you will now do it. So you will now take the consent from them and then do it. <clears throat> so writing is a very very tough task, and then you have to be very proper because the terms and conditions which are writing on the PC must be valid in the court of law. So that way you are right it. So there will be so many legal experts will be basically helping you out in doing this now. <clears throat> so with their help only, you will be doing it. Fine. It's not possible for us to immediately write it now. So go there. So I'll not do it. Fine. So the legal experts of the company will now guide you in writing it actually. So these terms and conditions of a procurement contract are legally binding in a court of law. Both the parties can sue each other if they find any deviations in the terms and conditions. So that way it will not. Authoring the TNC of a contract is the essence of preparing the PCH. How to author the terms and conditions? Fine. This is where your 
whole skill lies actually right and then it has to be very proper so that what happens even if uh, uh, the other party let's say you are a supplier and the customer is now suing the court of law so it has to protect you in every means you have to write it in a very proper manner you must be a legal expert so once when the contract is approved fine it will be printed and then sent by the post to supplier or otherwise communicated to him through fax or email or whatsapp nowadays what happens even even have a docu sign so through docu sign also we send it to him for approval actually and then once when he approves it becomes a valid one through docu sign so docu sign is an again app fine is now available in the market so through docu sign if you do it what happens it will now become what happens valid one now <clears throat> one second yeah so a contract is going to be created and then whenever you are creating when uh, whenever you are creating a contract it will be le bu specific actually the contract will be le bu specific is a combination of this if an employee it is an employment contract right? whenever you are employing somebody what happens it will not ask for any item master at all fine right? now you are now what happens uh, recruiting an employee so he will ask him to sign a nda non disclosure agreement so uh, it will not write that what happens he will not uh, disclose the company's secret information to others and then uh, you will not obey all those things when there will be so many ndas will be there so nda will not have any item at all right? and so it will not ask for item master at all whereas for a normal contract it will be asking for item master and there will be no lines so there will not be any lines at all contract will not have any lines only the in in nda the class will be there <clears throat> with the reference for lines and no lines and then so we can have a contract for either lines or otherwise for no lines or free form fine right? glass for the item master if it is for these three things then what about the item master it will be asking for so if an le has got 10 bus and two master rocks right because you can even share the master across le provided the coa is same if the coa is going to be same across all the bus then we can very well share one master across multiple le's actually the contracts for lines is limited to the right of master and right? the child organization referring to the right of master via location so it is now limited to only the items of that item master referred in the pc actually right that way it is working so you have to decide upon how you want to create one fulfillment fulfillment of a contract is optional and not mandatory fine so after the completion of a contract if you want to create a po or a bpa or a cpa fine that that is called fulfillment so whenever you want to create it that is optional and then not mandatory actually. during the onboarding of a, a fresh hire you will be asked to sign a non disclosure agreement for not revealing the company's confidential information to others similarly during the execution of a big projects like construction amc maintenance etc the supplier has to sign these contracts so that what about the both the parties can approach the court of law on the deviation of if the side so the classes and conditions which are written on this uh, nda is actually right given to a big project right everybody both are doing both the parties are signed right? and those these contracts will be sent to the supplier for the con concurrence using doc sign so such contracts will not be having any lines at all <clears throat> so such above contracts will not have any fulfillment at all so you don't have any fulfillment so fulfillment will be not be applicable for every contract actually <clears throat> yeah fulfillment will now create a cpa or a sp or bp so there are three outputs for a fulfillment contract so it will be ultimately creating a cpa or a sp or a bp if the contract has line line items for fulfillment of lines no lines on free form we can go to actions create purchase order or automatically create a po also so we can very well do it okay that we are going to see about how to create the po actually you know the terms and conditions of a contract are not automatically copied into the po you if you want you can include them in the terms and conditions because if the tnc on the contract is now added to the po then what happens it becomes a very legal document and then uh, no, the purchase or supplier has to what happens uh, abide by the terms and conditions written on the contract terms of a po actually. it is not normally created right? but if you want you can add it so that what happens you have to legally and then they are legal in the court of law actually whereas we have one more terms in the uh, purchase order on the main terms what happens it will not say the payment terms is what 2 by 10 net 30 so if the 2 by 10 net 30 is not on 2 by 10 net 30 means what if we make a payment within 10 days time we can avail a 2% discount and then now what happens we are now paying after 15 days time and then you are still having the 2% discount then there is a deviation actually for that deviation if you go to the court what happens it no no rejected because 2 by 10 net 30 is nowhere explained fully on the po whereas the contract terms attached to a po on the second tab region on the top Fine. That has got a very legal uh, what happens uh, binding, and so what happens is now written very perfectly. And then any deviations on the terms and conditions of a contract attached via the uh, what happens the uh, contract terms, fine. That will be honoured in the court of law. There are normal ones like uh, the payment terms and all will never be honoured in the court of law because co the the judge will ask what is this stupid and it is there. Where is it written? There? You may explain a lot of things, but it is not written anywhere in the PO at all. So though they are not valid, only the if you are attaching the contract terms to the pew then it becomes a valid one so lines have locations tied to the org 
full blown POs will be created uh, for those locations only. Right? So line location tie is a very mandatory one as far as solution is concerned. So there are no functionality for a contract actually. So contract will not have any functionality at all. Right? It is only for legal obligations actually. Say the terms and conditions says a 5% penalty will be levied if the goods are not supplied on the promised day. So we are not saying, hey, I will not leave you a 5% penalty. And then what happens if you are doing it? Fine. So if he is not deviating on the contract, so we have every right to what happens, put a penalty. Into. The payables clerk has got has to manually levy the penalty. Okay? It will never get automatically levied at all. So the contract basically will not have any functionality. It is not going to guide your people on what happens, abiding to the contract terms. Right? So only we have to take a manual action. Uh, then what happens, he will not, the payables clerk has to only manually levy the penalty after approval by his boss in an email. No? And after due information to the supplier also, because the supplier will sort like, hey, yaar, tum kaise kiya kaam kiya? And then as a raise, what happens, he may be even, uh, it may even raise a legal conflict if you are not exactly following the 5% penalty actually. The contract is like this, no? you grow your daughter, an educator, <clears throat> but when she makes love, she will not obtain your consent at all. Fine. Parents propose and then child disposes basically. Similarly, your fulfillment PO from a contract will reference its parent contract for terms and conditions, but it will not have any functionality on the receiving side or in the invoicing side or on the payment side. Right? The contract will not have any control at all. Right? Like the contract says that if the goods are delivered after 30 days' time from the promised date, they will be rejected in the gate. Fine. That is what the contract says. Fine. That's what I say, not access. But but you can even receive the PO in your next gen mall, so no problem at all. Fine. <laughs> It'll allow you. The contract is not going to stop you from making a result after 30 days, actually. So it is saying, but if you want to, what happens? Enforce this, you only have to manually enforce it. You're not doing anything. POs will not back reference the parent contract for functionality. It will not be a reference. But on the contrary, the contract admin will be monitoring the POs. There is a contract admin in there, so he will be continuously monitoring all the POs and then on identifying the deviation. He will not send an email to the purchase officers or invoice uh, clerk or whomsoever is the receiving agent or whomsoever it is. And then what happens? Uh, uh, he will not ask you to stop any activity. And then still the disputes are settled be there in the court of law or whatever it is. Not fine. So the the what happens? The contract admin will not take a manual action. The contract will not have any functionality at all. <clears throat> so these terms and conditions in the contract uh, table in the contract tab region of a PO will have a legal standing. Remember. On the contract tab region of view, if you are attaching the contract, then what happens will be having is only if the, both, both have obtained the supply signature using document or any physical document actually. You have to have a signature with the supplier actually. Otherwise, what happens that will not be valid. So otherwise, the terms in a PO will have only a legal will be legally valid and not a contract terms actually. So these terms and PO do not fully explain the legal conditions of those now. Right? So they are not valid in the court of law actually. They have a limited liability. Fine liability. From uh, both the sides is very limited actually. So only contract terms and a contract drafted by legal experts will have full functionality out of the South Supplies Conference. So this is basically yeah, what happens an essence of a procurement contract. So the procurement contracts is meaning what for the terms and conditions which you're going to write, which will be legally valid in the court of law. So we have to write it very properly actually. So and then they don't have any direct functionality. So they'll be referred by the what happens the contract had been, and then if there is any deviations found, he will approach either the supplier. Or our own agencies like receiving or invoicing or payments, and then he may even stop some actions. Mm -hmm. So okay, fine, good. So this is one of Let us now begin. So we are now seeing the uh, what happens an extract point. The synopsis of a procurement contract. <laughs> you go there, and then let us now create it. So go there. So here what happens? You go there. So I will now go to the what fusion procurement worksheet. Okay, close it. Close it. And then here, what I want to go there, I will not open up and click on it. I will not go to see admin. I will not open up the fusion procurement documentation. I mean, fusion procurement worksheet. Well, let me open up the fusion procurement worksheet. So we are now opening the fusion procurement worksheet. Now, thank you. Go down. Go down. <clears throat> Self-service procurement kind of thing. <clears throat> so this is the procurement contract. Now, what happens uh, in in uh, sourcing? We have one admin there. Sourcing admin is there, and then a negotiator is there. So there are two types of employees. The admin will be setting up the sourcing, and then he will not create any negotiation at all. Whereas the negotiator will not create all the negotiations. Here, what happens? Uh, the PC admin himself will be creating the PC actually. The PC admin will be getting it, and then there is one more one more person called what? The business practice director. He is responsible for drafting all the classes and then other things. 
He will now create all the terms and conditions. So he is basically responsible for what happens creating the what happens the terms and conditions of a contract. Actually. So there are two employees here. One is a PC admin who will be going to create the PC itself. And then the next one is what? The business practice director who will be drafting the complete terms and conditions. Actually. So if you're going to implement for a cement company or a steel company, you will not discuss with the business practice director of the implementing company. So you'll be a legal expert with whom you will not discuss and then you will not draft the classes actually. Class class drafting is a real, real tough task. That's where your real skill lies. It must be valid in the court of law. That way you have to write. So if any party, any party is not going to go to the law, so it will have a legal standing on this. And you may even ask for what happens, uh, a compensation basically. And that way it will be good. So I'll go there. I will not create, first of all, yeah, EMP1, fine, P01, EMP1, I'm going to create. So he will be there, what I was, your PC admin, actually. Go there, you know, go to the system. No, we will not create what? The PC admin. So go there, click on it. We will not create a PC admin, actually. No, go to the top, fine. click on the name. So we are not going to create two users, now fine. One is the PC admin, and then one is the terms and direct, business practice direct. And then we will not create the PC admin. Click on it and then go there. Go to the search and find it. I'm going to go to the manage users task. Manage users task. Enter in a point. Go to the manage users task. Go there. So we're not going to get the PC admin. If I click on the manage users task, I will now be creating an admin. Right? Click on. So I'll be using the P01 EMP1 prefix actually. Right? Go there. Go there. Click on it. One second. So I will be creating the EMP1 now, right? The EMP1 and go there to the P01 underscore. He is going to be the PC admin actually. Go there, click on it. The P01 underscore EMP1 at the rate gmail.com. So we're giving it that one. And the username is what? I go there, I will not give P01 underscore EMP1. Right, never one. They're giving it up, I click on it. And then I'm not giving another thing, I click on it, go there. And then the person type is going to be employee. Make it as employee. And then go there. <laughs> He is now an employee. So the legal employer is what? Years one. So years one is the one. So we are sticking to the, what happens, your visions one. Now, fact, on it. If you go back here, if you go to the COC print, if you go to the fourth one, find the third document. If you see the third document, find the, the vision interface structure, find the, So we are working only on the vision structure, actually. So we have a vision interface. We have a ledger called US primary ledger. We have a COA called US startup accounts. The legal entity is US one legal entity. The business unit is US one business unit. And then you have a master of as what operations. Right, most of his operations and then the child org is what zero zero one zero zero two all those things. So we are in, we are sticking to the same structure. We are not going to create any new structure for demonstrating a PC actually. So here's one. The business unit is what here's one. I will not give us one business unit and the job is what a chart. I will not give a job as a chart and the chart and then go there. The department is also a chart. So I can give a little and remember, the location is a mandatory one if you're going to go for self-service procurement. And every individual employee's location has to be provided. And that will be defaulting onto the requisitions, actually. Fine. His residence is uh, what happens to your uh, his, uh, uh, residence. Fine. He may be in Nagpur. He may be in Bhopal. Wherever he is, he may be a sales officer. He may be a marketing manager. Fine. So, my, so their residence location address will be coming over here. So that what happens, they are not procuring it for the uh, uh, residence only, not for the, any inventory halls. Whereas the other models do not need a location. Go there. So click on save and close by which what happened. The first employee is now created. So we are now completed the creation for them. Who is going to be the PC admin now? This guy itself will be getting the contract. Actually. The PC admin will be getting a contract. Now I click on it. So click on save and close by which happens. This activity is now completed. So we'll now go ahead and then create the second employee who is going to be the business practice director. So the business practice director is responsible for framing the terms and conditions of a contract actually. And then when you are implementing it, you will not in interact with the business practice director of the company, of a cement company or a steel company or a petrochemical company. And then you will not jointly sit and then what happens is frame the classes actually. Authoring the terms and conditions is a real, real tough task in a PC actually. So that you'll be doing it by sitting along with them. <clears throat> because you are not a cement expert or a steel expert. So naturally what happens is your expertise is limited. And you might have worked on something, but you may not be working on everything. You go there and then query for the P01. So we had only discuss with them on private because it has to be legally valid. It's very, very important actually. So we already have what happens. 
one more uh, p01 now fine so what i will do is i will not like to create yes 01 now fine because p01 somebody has already created something now fine gone so what i will do is i will not uh, and yes rl it is there so i will okay, now make what happens yes 01 you know see on yes 01 anything is there on yes 01 because so there are so many people are working on it now fine click on search you know see yes 01 nothing is there i will not create my employee on yes 01 actually mm -hmm. EMP one the S zero one underscore. So the email is what you go there, click on it. The S zero one underscore EMP one. The user is at the rate gmail.com. And the username is what S zero one underscore EMP one. So, so the person name is employee. And then here it is what US one. And then you know, give it up business unit is also US one. So I don't know if you want job. I know for some job. In reality, the job on a uh, uh, manager is very important. Remember, they are all legal users actually, and legal users. So legal users are transactional users. Remember, they are all transaction users. They can very well perform the transactions. Thank you, second So yes, zero one EMP one is ready. So we'll now query it, and then this is going to be the what's called the PC admin actually, and the PC admin only will be creating the PC. I'll now go there and then make a search for it. Now I click on it. So click on plus. I will now create that. The business practice director who is going to be the EMP2. EMP2 is going to be the business practice director. So both that part. And the email is what? Yes01 underscore EMP2 at the rate gmail.com. And the username is what? I don't know, say yes01 underscore EMP1. Go down. Okay. The person type is what? Employee. And then go down. Legal user is what? US1. And the business unit is what? US1. Job is what I'm putting a chart now. I click on a chart. I'm putting some job. I click on it. And then the department is also going to be a chart now. I'm putting the department of a chart. So, go there. so this is sufficient for the what happens, the business practice director. I click on set of roles. So once when the users are created, right, we had to give the roles. And only when you give a role, they will not start to act accordingly. Now. So click on search now. Find will be running the second user now. Is zero one EMP two? Why is not coming? Find. Click on search. Now. What he did, I made a mistake or what? I made a what happens? Even a seven close, I will not say EMP2. And then I click on search. Yes, zero one EMP2. P01. EMP1 is there, but EMP2 is not there at all. I don't know, some, some mistake has happened. I click on this. I will not create the people. I made a mistake. I made a mistake. I think EMP2. The yes, zero one underscore. So email it is what is zero one one underscore emp two at the rate gmail.com and then well, the username is what is zero one underscore emp two we make a mistake what I'm very difficult to make it about employee then go there is a US one ah okay ma business unit is what US one job is what a char and the department also a job. So the second employee is now under creation actually. He is a business practice director. Fine, click on seven close. You know, creating it actually. Again, we'll go on and put in a fine seven close. Oh god, it is D01. I made a mistake. Now I click on it. I don't know what I was S01. I made a mistake. Now I click on that is where the mistake is. I click on made a mistake. Now I click on so the EMP2 fine. D01, I mean, I think click on income. We'll see whether we can change the name or not. So, but now the first name I will not change in a friend with the S01. So, you're not changing the name. <laughs> so, nowhere else the mistake is that I click on seven close. So, my S01, click on seven close. So, the first name has been changed actually. So, I'll we'll now make a search again. I click on search. Now it is S01. Right? So, the names are done proper. So, he is a PC admin and then he is going to be the business practice director. We'll not go on and assign the roles now. Thank you. Not take on the phone now. Now we are going to assign the roles. We'll not go to the tools. Not go to the roles. We'll not go there. We'll not go to the tools and then assign the roles. Thank you for the roles. And then here, go to the security console. You're not going to assign the roles. Only when you give a role, what happens? It'll not start to work on. Otherwise, it'll not work on. So you go to the users and then query for the S01. So you'll now find two users now find. So the first employee EMP1 is on the PC admin fine. Click on it. Let us know first of all, this is the password. So that whatever we can very well log in now. Click on it. So you'll know manually change it actually. 
So we are not changing it now. So the password over. <clears throat> Click on reset password. So we are not password is no reset actually. So click on it and then I'm going to add the role. Click on it. So what we do is he is a, he is a PC admin himself. So what I will do is I will now give all the basic rules. So go you know, to, 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 to so page up. So I will now give all these rules actually. Application implementation consultant. Right? The first role I'm going to give it. Right? I will now give the application implementation consultant. So he can very well whatever the, do the setups actually. I'm not giving the power of setups. I'm always use the Aura, not ASM or anything like that. Aura is having the highest power. I want it. And then choose it and then click on add or push. And then afterwards, what happens? I will not give the IT security manager. So you can even come over here and then what happens? You can come to the security console basically. In reality, what happens? The PC admins will not be given these powers actually. IT security manager will not be given. But since it is a training, we are not doing it. So reality, what happens? The project manager will be having the IT security manager. He will not be giving to even the implementation consultants because of a security. SaaS model says that nobody other than the project manager must have the IT security manager. So that way it's working. Okay. So depending upon the company policy, so the decisions of the SaaS, not fine. Go there, click on it. And then click on it. But if you if you're not having it, then even if you want to add a role, you have to ask the PC uh, the project manager. He will be adding it for you on your user actual if you're not having it. So these three roles are being given. Okay. Now go down <clears throat> page down. Don't come to the two fifty two. So now application implementation as an ID security manager and employer better. Then supplier contract administrator is the best one of mine. You know, add the supplier contract administrator. Fine. This is required because we are now working on the PC contract. Now I will not add the what the supplier contract admin. So the he is a supplier contract administrator also. Aura, Aura one you said my So the PC admin is having the supplier contract administrator role also. Then afterwards, what happens? The team member fine goes click on it. So the team member is required only for fulfillment actually. If a particular employee is not having a team member, he cannot create any fulfillment at all. The fulfillment are what? Your PO, CPA and BPA. So if a particular employee is not having this role, then he cannot create a fulfillment at all, fine. So you must be very clear upon this, fine. In order you want it, you, if you want, if you want to have a fulfillment of your contract, fulfillment is optional, it is not mandatory. If you're having a fulfillment, you must have the supplier contact Contract team member role, and then only he can create a full minute. Full minute, otherwise, it's not possible. For that, I will not paste it. Now, I will not choose what OKC. So, Ora is not OKC. Choose the Ora now. Fine. Ora is the one you have to choose. Choose the Ora. Ora is the best one. Fine. Having highest powers actually. Can click on add bonus. Giving it. So, we are given what the supplier contract team member because we are going to fulfill it all. The business practice director will be given to EMP2 only because the EMP2 is going to frame the classes and I think so. Whatever they are not going to give it. Now, fine. So here, what happens? I will not give the procurement manager role. I will not give that procurement manager role also. Go to the procurement manager and then give over. Fine. So he is the procurement manager also. Fine. Go that In reality, he may not be creating the procurement. What happens? You will not be getting a purchase order at all. PC admin will be purely restricted to only the PC creation and not procurement manager. But since it is a training, we are now giving everything. And similarly, supply manager. Now, what happens? You can even create what a supplier also. <laughs> and again, everything is need based actually. Fine. What do you want to give in the field? Accordingly, give it a fine. In the training, we will not add everything. And then for creating an item, what happens? You will not give the product data steward. Fine. Product data steward is for item. And then your bill creation, actually. Paste it now. Product data steward. And what Add or machine. So now we are given the sufficient roles, fine, for the training, actually. And then click on what? So click on done and then what happens? Go there and then click on save and close. Now what happens? This 01 EMP1 is not fully done with the password of the reset actually. We are not using the password also. You don't understand? Click on them. We are not in. Now, what happens? You don't go to the EMP2. So, for EMP2, you know, first of all, reset the password. Click on the reset passwords. You don't know. Go there and then reset the password. So click on reset password. <clears throat> so you know reset the password. Now edit it and go to comment. And then click on add room. So he will be having what the business practice director. He is now responsible for framing the terms and conditions of a contract. Now find the account. Will not give this room. The business practice director will give it. Now, and then normally add an employee role also. 
clients. So normally you add employee role. Employee role is normally added to every employee because it's an abstract role. It provides you a lot of it. There were, you were a, yes, 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 jobs can be very well seen now, kind the concurrent jobs building. And then there are so many other facilities of that. It is an abstract role. It is not specific to any, any one kind of the client. So this guy is now having only two roles. Now, fine. Business practice director and an employee. Nothing else is there. So click on save and close. So now what happens? This is also done. So we have completed the creation of what? Uh, the assigning the roles to the individual employees. The PC admin as well as the business practice director. Now what happens? You go there, go to the place. And then you run the import user role. Right? You know, go to what? You know, go to what tools. And then you go to the scheduled process. And then run the import user role. You know, run the import user role. <laughs> Import percentage point user percentage point role percentage then give it So import user role is the one file that you want to take out here. You're not running it. So click on submit and then what happens? This will now sync all your setups on the on the security console into the transaction systems. But this is inbuilt actually. It will not after from four or five hours, it will not sync everything. But we want immediate results, and so we are now for syncing it actually. This is a for syncing, and then uh, we want immediate results, and so that's why we are now for syncing it into this place. This is a for syncing it. The force syncing is now happening up and you want it. And then similarly, what happens? You go to the schedule process and run the LDAP also. And both the things you need not have to run in the field at all because what happens? You won't do the transactions immediately. You will not do after a day or two. So within the time, what happens? The system syncs everything automatically. So the automatic syncing mechanism is already in place, but it will take its own time. But since we want immediate results, fine. <clears throat> two minute total like that. What happens? We want it. And so what happens? We are now force syncing these two things. You know, running and then we have to wait for some time actually right we'll wait for some time and then afterwards we will not log into the system with the emp1 who is going to be the pc admin actually so let it run in the meantime what happens there are some setups you have to make now finally connect so the procurement contracts comes under crm module it is coming under crm module so what you have to do is you click on the home icon and then we have to there are three modules on crm actually as far as contract is concerned i will not click on the home icon and then you go to the setup and maintenance fine click on the setup and maintenance and then here, what happens? Go there. And then here, what happens? Go there. Go to the actions. And then here, what happens? Go to the go to the offerings. You go to the offerings. And then you go to the enterprise contract now. You go to the enterprise contract. Right? Click on the enterprise contract. So in this place, what happens? It is enabled because only when it is licensed, it will be enabled. Right? So there are three modules under enterprise contract. Whichever you have licensed it, what happens? It gets enabled actually. But since it's the training, it's all enabled everything. In reality, what happens? It depends based upon the license. What happens? It will be enabled. So click on the opt-in features. Fine. You'll be seeing all the three modules. Below the enterprise contract. So click on the opt-in features. You will now see the three offerings which are there on this. So one is what? The service contract. Fine. It is now put a tick mark. And then the procurement contract. The second one. And then the third one is the sales contract. So whenever you have what happens a license for any of these things, what have you it? And then application extensions are always common for every uh, what happens a set of uh, this thing now. Fine. So that is also enabled. So let us say PC, your purchase license, you are not got for anything for a sales now. Even if you put a tick mark, it will not work for sales because you don't have a license actually. <clears throat> but it is preferable to enable everything and then keep it available. So this is the first setup you have to make. So whichever module you have now purchased for the end client actually, as an implementer, what happens? You have to enable that particular module. First. So we are now working on PC and then it is already enabled. Right? So this is the first setup. The next setup is what? You go there, click on the now, <clears throat> you come back here. The next setup is what? You go and then choose the financials. Now click on the financials. The second setup, click on the financials. And then go there. I will now say what happens. Assign. Assign Buzi Buzi. So assign Buzi Buzi. Assign Buzi Buzi. And then click on the scope selection. Now click on select. Now go there. Drop it down. And then choose your business unit. Click on, and then apply and go to task. And then we are going to choose our business unit. Oh, this is what? Use one. Use one. And then click on search. Now click on search. You'll be getting it. So I'm going to choose it. Select it from the left hand side. And then click on the save and close. Now. So the functions has to be selected actually. So go there. So here, what happens, uh, if you see what happens, you'll be having what? Uh, the procurement contracts management. Fine, this has to be enabled actually. Right. The procurement contracts management has to be enabled. And then if you're going to go for sales, then what happens? The customer contract management must be enabled. And then for service, what happens? This has to be enabled. But since it is a vision, what happens? They have enabled everything. So depending upon whatever the module license has been purchased, you had enabled. And then enabling is no harm at all. You can even enable everything. It doesn't matter. It will not work at all. If you don't have a license, what happens? It will not work at all. Just like what happens, it is like a hall ticket. By keeping a hall ticket, you cannot pass the exam. You have to read and then whatever, you have to carry a bit with you. So then only what happens, you can pass the exam. <clears throat> so likewise, what happens, you enable everything. doesn't matter. No home at all. So, uh, so this is the second setup you have to begin. Now, the third setup. 
So what happens? The employee whom you have signed in must be a what happens? A resource first of all. So I know I'm not giving any seven clause. I'm giving cancel the committee. So two setups are completed. Now the third setup. No, thank you, Governor. So EMP one who is going to be the PC admin must be a resource. No, thank you, Governor. No go there. I will not sign out and then sign in as EMP one. No. Sign out and then sign in as EMP one. No. You know, signing out now, thank you, Governor. Then click on confirm. No. And then here what happens? Go there. I will not say what happens. It's, a, it's called yes zero one underscore EMP one, and then you know sign in. So let us not sign in. No, sorry, yes zero one underscore uh, EMP one. Go there and click on sign. No, we are not signing as a PC admin actually. He has been given a requisite role, but not fully now. Thank you, sir. Now, what happens? I will not go to the contracts tab region. Fine. Previously, what happens? You go to the procurement tab region. There, what happens? We are able to see the purchase requisitions, purchase orders, my receipts for SSP now, fine. Suppliers. And then negotiation icon will be coming if you are giving this role now. Go there. So the negotiation icon will be coming if you are giving this role now. <clears throat> go there. In the single stage, all of you here. What happens? The sourcing project collaborator. This will now allow you to set up the sourcing. And then if you are giving the procurement contracts administrator, what happens? There, and then the category manager, you will be able to create the negotiations itself. So these are roles with the procurement contract administrator and then the category manager. So here, what happens? We are now given the different role actually. In the procurement contracts, what happens? We are now given what? Uh, we are not given the procurement contracts administrator. Not given. So once when you give the procurement contracts administrator, you can very well create a what happens? Your sourcing contract negotiation. But here, what happens? We are now giving what? Supplier contract administrator and then what happens? Your team member actually. <clears throat> anyway, given enough to connect. So now having given this, what happens? Supplier contract administrator and team member. And then the procurement manager, everything has been given. Okay, that. So now what happens? He will be have you will be able to see the what happened, the procurement contracts. Mm -hmm. So go there. So click on it. Now go there and then have a look. So here it won't be available in the procurement because it is a CRM module, and so there is one separate thing called contract. You go to the contracts now. We'll be having contract management. There are three modules are there. One is the procurement contract, one is the sales contract, one is the service contract. Now I click on it. And then we have only the PC available now. Click on the contract. So uh, the sales and service will be coming if you give the appropriate role to them. Then it will be coming. So we have given only the supplier contract administrator now. Right? So the supplier contract administrator will not give him only what the contracts, the PC only it will not give. So click on it and then we will not try to create a, what happens a contract. So he cannot create because what happens he is not a resource at all. Only a resource, fine, is there, called a CRM resource. A CRM resource can only create a contract actually. We go there. So go there, click on the contract. And then you click on the create contract. On the right side, we have a fine click on create contract. So once when you create a contract, what happens? Your your B B your uh, what happens? The business unit is come and drop down. Your business unit is come. Business unit is not coming at all. The legal unit drop down. What happens is also not coming. Not coming. So go there. So nothing is coming yet. <clears throat> the type is what you go there. So the business unit is the mandatory one. Fine. Go there, click on search, now can click on search. Nothing is there actually. So nothing is set actually. And then even if it is set, what happens? It will not it try to give a same condition. It will not throw an error that you are not a resource actually. So you will not make him as a resource, and then you will not have an access to the appropriate B and A also. So you cancel. So it's not coming. So I want to show that you are unable to create, but it is not even coming. The even the basic things are also not coming now. Thank you, Governor. So that way it's working now. Once again, I will not go to another instance and then try to do it. Now. I will not go to another instance and then. Uh, mm, this is one now we are working upon now. Ah, uh, I don't see 57. Ah, uh, 17. I'll have to find out some other user or bad one of will not throw an error actually. Uh, see if any other instances available. I will not say it's eTouch. The eTouch is there. Thank you for it. Don't try to log in. No, thank you for it. No, not in. The eTouch. Thank you for it. No, no, no. Okay. So I'm unable to show you if I'm not able to. So now what happens? We'll now make him as a resource actually. You will not be able to create also. Even if it is the, the BU and LE are coming up, then it will not say you are not a resource. Fine. First of all, you have to make him as a resource. Fine. So you will now click on the top name and then go to the setup and maintenance. And then we are now going to make them as a resource. Now find the uh, third setup. Now first setup is what? On the offerings, we have to see enable the procurement contracts enable. The second setup is what? Assign busy busy, where the procurement contracts must be enabled. Now the third setup is what? We are going to make him as a resource. Now fine. click on it. And then go to search and I'll click on it. I'll now go to the manage resource. Manage resource. So go to the manage resource and go there. I will now go on that, make him as a resource. 
Manage resources. Manage resources. Manage resources. Classes coming. Manage resources. Please find manage resources. Manage resources. So go to the manage resources and then you are going to what happens. Click on plus and then create a resource. Thank you, contrast. So we want to create it. Whatever the person name. Normally, what happens in everywhere, it will be last name come up as name. Right? If you go on the for EMP1 and then search for it, it will not come at all. Usage is for what? It's for the employee. Right? Employee. And then click on search. You're not trying to find out. Fine. It will not say, uh, you know, coming C01 is coming. Fine with that. Uh, ours is not exactly coming because he is, uh, it is not exactly coming. So what you have to do is what? You have to search on the full name, actually. Fine with that. You have to search on the first name, first of all. P01, S01. So make a search on the first name and not on the last name. Thank you, no search. If you search for it, what happens? Both the employees are coming. So in a resource, what happens? Uh, we are, when you're trying to make him as a resource, you, after giving a plus, what happens? You query on the first name. Not coming. So go there. So I will not click on it. And then I will not select it. Fine. I am not going to add the resource. Fine. Click on add resource. Fine. Click on add resources. And go there. So the selected people will be enabled as a resource. Now. Fine. It is a CRM resource, remember. It is a CRM resource. Fine. Click on it. It is enabled for sales contract, procurement contract, and service contract. So click on it and go there. Now what happens? The organization will be a CRM organization. Fine. It will be doing the organization also later on. Fine. The role is again for the sales actually. Fine. And then the role. Fine. The role is important. Fine. The role, what happens? You're going to make it as what? Contract manager actually. You know, go there. You're we'll not making it as a contract manager. We're we'll not making it as what? Contract manager. <clears throat> uh, CEO, uh, contract, contract manager is administrator. No, come on it. So this is the only one we will be doing it now. Right? The set, the sales credit type, the organization, the sales tax, everything will be all applicable for the your sales contract and service contract and not for the procurement contract. For a PC, when you want to make him as a resource, the role is sufficient. Role is sufficient. Click on seven close. That's it. So you're not enough. You're not you know, adding him as a resource. He's a PC resource, actually. He's not a sales resource or a service resource. He's a PC resource. Actually. So first employee has been made as a resource. Thank you. So click on that. So having done this, what happens? We have to create our internal resource org. And next is what? We go there and then create an internal resource org. You know, go to what? Manage person fine. Internal fine. Resource percentage fine. Manage internal resource fine. So manage internal resource org. <clears throat> so we have to create an internal resource org, which is a CRM org number. It's not an inventory org. So we are now going to create a CRM org. Manage internal resource org fine. Click on the hyperlink of it. Fine. We are now going to create a CRM org. Fine. Click on this. I'm going to, I will not say it's what, yes, zero, one, mm -hmm. fine. I will not say internal, fine, resource underscore R. Mm -hmm. It's not a create from existing, no, it's not a new one, no. Fine. Choose the second option, option two, you choose it. Create a new R. So click on next, no, thank you. I don't know that this name will be coming or not, fine. Think about it. And then click on next, no. So click on next. So click on next. You're invalid as well, no, fine. Invalid values, no, basically. Oh, God. Okay, I think you had to, you make it as a blank and then do it, no. It is only for the first option you are know. For the second option, make it as a blank and then click on next. Next. So here I will not paste the name. Paste. And then go there. And then here, go to what happens, a plus. No, fine. Click on plus. And then go there. So usage is for what? Fine. Go there. It is for all the four things. No, fine. Contracts, and then marketing, sales, and then service, actually. So I will not use it for contracts. Actually. Contracts is mainly for PC, actually. You choose it. And then if this internal org is going to be for other things, the marketing and sales also, you have to give plus plus and then add those things. So since we are only concentrating only on the yes for only on the PC, what happens? You're not getting the contracts organization. So this organization will act as a contract organization. It may even act as a marketing organization, sales organization, service organization, etc. etc. And then one org is sufficient for all the modules. So click on it. By which what happens? The internal resource org is now created. Click on finish. Now we have to associate our resource to the internal resource org. Next section is what? Associating the resource to the internal resource org. Right? Click on the home icon. Right? Click on the home icon. And then here, what happens? You go to the other tab. You go to the other tab. You go to the other tab. Fine. Here, what happens? You'll be finding one resource directory. So the resource directory is not visible here now. Fine. Not visible. So what you do is, uh, if it's not visible, you can even go plus and then add it. Otherwise, what happens? You click on the uh, navigator icon. Now. Fine. Click on the navigator icon. So go there. Here, you go to the what happens? Others now. Fine. Go to the others. And there you can find. Now. Fine. Here, nothing will be hidden actually. Fine. Go there. So there you can hide it now. Fine. Something will be hidden with the plus. We can very well bring it now. So in the others, what happens? You go and then click on the resource directory. Then click on it. We are now going to make link the internal resource org to our resource actually. <clears throat> so go to the resource directory and click on the resource directory. Others resource directory. And then here you click on the uh, what happens? The task list now. Fine. On this one, on the resource org, view the org. Under the resource org, click on the view org. Then click on the view org. You want to view it now. Fine. Go there. I will say is that uh, yes zero one is the one. Fine. You make a search. Fine. Click on search. I will put the org name. Fine. Go there. Search. 
Now I will not edit this resource all. So I'm going to edit this all. So here, what happens? I'm not going to have the members for this now. A resource will be a member now. Fine. The members, they you are now members, hierarchies, teams, and business unit. And as a member, what happens? You go there and then click on plus. You're going to add a member. So, go there. so the resource name is what? S01 underscore EMP1. So he is no more an employee, he's a resource also. Thank you for that. So go there. Resource name is what? S01. <clears throat> and then make a search. No, fine. Click on search. He's not coming. Since he has been made as a resource, it is not coming up in the list of values. Click on it. So go there. So it's not on the fine. Click on OK. So he is not on the fine. Give a save at this stage. So now you must assign a role to the organization member resource also. Thank you, Now that what happens? No, that, fine, that. So after having done this, you cannot save it actually. You go to the business unit. Now, fine, that. So the, the resource member is added, but what happens? You click on the business units and then add the BU. Fine, which BU you want? Fine, click on the BU. So click on the business unit. Fine, click on plus. You're going to add it. Fine, that. So I will not say what happens. Use one. <clears throat> so give it time. Use one business unit. So that. And then click on plus. Now, fine. I will now add one more BU also. Fine, click on plus. Now add it. Fine. UK business unit. So if he is going to work for multiple BUs, what happens? He can add it very well. Now, fine. Nobody. So then one fine. Click on save. Now, fine. Click on save. Now it will be getting. You must assign a role to an organization member resource. Now, fine. You must assign a role. So what happens? Uh, you must assign a role. Uh, you must assign a role to an organization member resource. You go to the member. Now, fine. Click on the member. And then here, what happens? You go there. Uh, those name is coming. Now, click on it. Now, click on it. Now, click on it. Uh, I'm going to actions and then what happens? I go there. I'm going to actions. Then I'm going to add a row. I don't know why it's not got it. Oh, God. Here, we had to add the role. Right? The row, the resource member's role has to be added. Now, fine. Resource member role. I don't know what happens. Go there. I will not make a resort contract manager. So, in this place, actions then add. No. Contract manager. Contract manager. So, click on OK now. <clears throat> So it's not done. So we add it, fine, click on save. At this stage, we'll not allow it. So only when you add or happens the membership, fine. You can add a person and then add a role also. As a contract manager, we are adding it. Okay. Go there. So resource name is not fully visible actually. I don't know why it's not visible. Now. So there must be yeah. column distinct effect on it. It's not showing me anything. If you take on the edit, now click on edit, and that's shown. Fine. So HR employee is there, resource usage is there, and resource organizations come out, and then the contact manager. Okay, so is done. So in order now, fine, okay. I will now go to the what is the one now if I click on it. And then click on the business unit. Now if I click on the business unit. And then we add in this fine, click on save and then close. So we are now associated this. And now what happens? The next step is what? We have to make one of them as a default actually. Fine, click on save and close. So click on save and close. It's not done. So the resource directory is now completed. Again, the members are all CRM activity now. Now what happens? You go there. And then here, go down, okay, click on it. And then here, what happens? You go to the manage common CRM business unit profile options. Good. You want to take up this one, you have to take up. So 207 number, fine, go there. I will not go to the what? Take copy, wait. Go there. Don't go, go there. I will not. What happens? Click on the home icon. Okay, click on the home icon. I am in the resource directory, actually. Then click on close. So click on the home icon. Mm -hmm. Back here, okay, click on this. And then you will not go to the task. Okay, click on it. You will not go to the setup and maintenance. So go to the setup and maintenance. <clears throat> In this place, what happens? You go there and click on it. So click on search and then paste it over here. Okay? Manage common CRM. Oh, okay. so the profile. CRM profile. No. Click on it. CRM profile. So what is the default BU I'm going to find? Click on the default BU for the CRM. Right? Click on it. Go there. So click on it. And then here, what happens? I'm going to make a change. Okay? Click on it. I'm going to change it as what? US1. US1 business unit. Uh, where is the US1 business unit? Uh, US1 business unit. Okay? I'm close it. So this is my default BU now. That will be defaulting whenever you're creating a contract actually. So the default BU is now set. Thank you. Awesome. So the next profile option is what? It is a multi multiple BU now. Thank you. It's a multi-org access control. Thank you. And then say it has to be a such. So it is already yes. And site level it is yes. No? So it is basically a multi-org. So multiple BUs, you can very well work with. So we have completed all the setups for the basic activity of creating a, or creating a contract. So first is what? In the offerings, you have to enable the procurement contracts. The second one is what? In assign busy busy, you have to enable the procurement co contract functionality. That's the second one. The third one is what? The employee has to be made as a resource. Right? That's the third activity. And the fourth activity is what? Creating an internal resource. Or, that's the fourth activity. The fifth activity is what? You go to the business directory. Right? You go to the business directory and then add your BUs and then the members basically. In the business directory, you're going to add the BU and member for your internal resource or the sixth activity is what the common CRM business function profile options. 
So once when you complete all the six activities, then what happens? Then you are now in a position to create a contract. Now, I will not go there. I will not log out and log in. So whenever you make such a major change, whatever, have a habit of logging out and logging in. Then click on confirm now, and that will not log in. Now we can very well create a contract. And then before we create a contract, whatever, you know, go there. You will not set up the document number. You know, click on it. No one will set up a minimum. You will not set up the document number. No go there. So click on search, no I click on search, no, no, manage my document numbering. So, so manage document numbering. You go to the manage document numbering, manage document sequencing. Sequencing, manage document sequences. So manage document sequences. So we'll you not know, query for the enterprise contract actually. You can click on it, we'll go there, drop it down, and then choose the enterprise contract. <laughs> So it is enterprise contract. So for this, make a search and no, click on it. And then you'll not find one ready made no, authoring document sequence. No, this is the one which is normally used actually. Okay. So what I do is you'll not go there. I will not, what I will not uh, do anything fine. So it is not having any BU. I mean, there's a common for everything fine. Expand it. I will not give a value of 20. 20 is the one. So the initial document, the contract document will be having already is for all the BUs actually. So if a BU specific one, let's say for US one, you are now giving what 10,000, that will now supersede this 28. So I'm not going to create another document authoring when tomorrow actually, tomorrow we'll be creating it. Fine. So I'm not using the existing one. So within all the BUs go together, is a 20. Tomorrow we'll now create our BU specific authoring number, authoring now. Now what happens, you go there and then I will now go to what type now. I'll now go to the manage document types, manage contract line types. I will now go to the contract line type. Now go to the page. Now right. no, see which is now using this automatic number. Right. Click on it. Now go there. Click on it. Uh, I will not go to the item. Now right. click on edit. Now right. item not using. Right. Click on it. I will not see whether it is not using the whatever the edit, edit contract type. Now right. what? And then save and close is only coming. Right. Not coming. So here contract type. Right. Uh, not this one. Now right. click on contract type. <clears throat> uh, manage contract types actually. The line type. Right. I will not go to the manage contract types. Now go there and click on done. <clears throat> I'll now go to the manage contract types. Fine, I'll now go to the contract types. Click on it. Now have a look at it. Let me choose the contract type which is now using an automatic numbering now. By lines, fine, go there. Uh, by agreement, no lines, now fine. By agreement, uh, no lines. I'll now choose it and click on it. I'll now click on the hyperlink of it. Click on it. By agreement, no lines. Now see whether it is now using an automatic numbering or not. So we had to use uh, automatic numbering from the quantum. Don't go that. Allow lines. Fine. Go that. Go it. Uh, days expiration contract number method is manual. No fine. So what I will do is I will now use the by agreement no lines. I will now make the numbering as automatic. So once then I make it as automatic, then what happens when I use in the contract this agreement no lines, it will be populating a number of twenty actually. It's fine. The contract numbering method is automatic. We are not changing it actually. Fine. It's a by agreement no lines. Click on save and close it. Again, contract sequence, I will not say what I'm authoring category name. This is the one. So you will now use the authoring category name. Fine. That's what we have done now. Fine. 20 number of you know. So it is automatic. Fine. The contract type. And by agreement, no lines. Now, let us now go there and then create a contract and then see whether 20 is coming or not. Fine. Click on go. And then you go to the contracts. Now, fine. Go to the contracts. <clears throat> go to the contracts management now. Go to the contracts management. And then click on the contracts and then create a new contract. So click on the contract. And then we will now create a new contract to test it. So click on the create contract. So once when you create a contract, your default BU will be coming there. No coming. And then the other BU also will be coming. UK is also coming. So the default BU is on and then default L is on. So I go there. I will now say by agreement, no lines. No. By agreement, no lines. This is the one. So this has got an automatic numbering. I not doing it now. I will now say number has to not come at all. Agreement, no lines. Fine. By agreement lines, no, right? which one you have done now? And we have done somewhere the numbering should not come at all. Right? That'll be made. Up. So what you have to do is what happens whenever you make a change, you have a habit of what logging out and logging in for the changes to take place. So whenever you make a change, have a habit of what logging out and logging in. So that will now what happens incorporate the changes you have made. Logging out and logging in. Now what happens? You go there. I will now go to what go there. I will now go to the contracts. No, click on the contracts. You go there. I will not go to the contracts. So contract management. I will not click on the contract now. The changes will be affected only when you log out and log in. You click on the contract. I will not create a contract. No, I click on it. Let us not create a contract. I click on create contract. 
and then here all of the whole thing is coming from type down all of the no say um, BPA no lines no fine reserve we made is automatic no fine agreement no lines no respect for it so once you give it but when the numbering should not come at all oh, numbering is still mandatory now okay. so the numbering should be automatic actually uh, by no lines no see everywhere it is now numbering is mandatory actually it is not properly set right? agreement nine no lines first time right? that may be something okay. by agreement no lines so click on search no fine click on search and then uh, no lines and then so click on search no lines. Go to the advanced and then make a search for And then you will see contains. Go to the contains of the no lines. So click on search no see how many are no lines. This is one of my lines. Still no lines. By no lines, will not see. This is the choose is not coming. Thank you. No lines. So this is the numbering is coming. Numbering should not be mandated. So the primary point is what? ABC consulting. I will not put that no fine. That party that supply no I will not say let's say 40 now. Because if you're given that as an automatic numbering, it will be coming fine. Some of the setups are also required on that one. So we'll be seeing it tomorrow. No fine. Item master organization is operations. Operations the one fine with that one. And then click on save and close by which what happens is no done now. So click on save and continue. Fine with that. So it's now getting done now. Fine. Click on it. Now you can see that what happens. Sir? This is now coming. Save and continue. So what about it is now going over there and if I click on it. So it will now create a contract actually. <clears throat> One second now. So the number 40 is now done and then what happens? Your contract is now created actually. So the contract is now created. And so what happens? You can go ahead and then do the setups. So to begin the contract, those six setups has to be done properly. Only when you do it, what happens? It will be enabling for contract creation actually. So we will now continue creating the contract tomorrow. No? And the other setups have done. So only when you complete all the setups, what happens? We will be in a position to create the contract actually. Are you clear now? Can somebody say yes to me? Hello, are you there? Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, yes, sir. Open up your video now. And then uh, tomorrow's class will be beginning at uh, 2 p.m., isn't it? Tomorrow's class at what? Yes, sir. Okay, tomorrow class will be at 2 p.m., isn't it? Fine. Yes, sir. Two hours, sir. Okay, 2 p.m. We will not begin the class tomorrow. No, fine. Go there. So click on it and then okay. bye for okay. now. Okay, okay, okay. Bye. bye.